What's up, what's up? This your boy, S. Rico. Hope y'all having a nice day. It's looking real pretty out here today. But what I wanted to get into is front camera kits. Let's go. As you guys can see, this bad boy, how much camber we are running. Now, as you guys can look at it from like up top, I have maybe what, two inches? Maybe, maybe an inch and a quarter of contact patch. Not good. The rest of my tire is completely fine. Now, a lot of people running a lot of camber in their tire. I don't see how, like it's totally unsafe. You're literally on the sidewall of your tire. Like I said in my past video, in one of my past videos, I did a test going a 40 miles an hour road and did an emergency stop and slid about, I don't know, probably 17 to 20 feet. That's what you don't want. Hey, if you see anybody with their car cambering that much, get from in front of them because anything can happen. You know, safety first, right? Safety first. <laughs> Too much camber is the wrong camber. Now this right here is your run of the mill, typical no name camber kit, eBay camber kit for any EF chassis. And also I think 90 to 93 DA integers. If I'm wrong, correct me on that, please correct me. So you can see the travel, the motion of travel that you have is not much at all. Anyone I know how a skunk to, there's a couple of companies that make camera kits for EFs. They're, they're, their camber travel is a lot better than what you would see on this right here. That also run with this design. Why? I do not know. And up here you have your bushings. Now, when it comes to these bushings right here, if you tighten these too tight, you have to have them somewhat kind of loose or you will get binding. Look, these is already, this, this nut right here is already loose and I'm already getting binding. You don't believe me? Check this out. <laughs> this is crazy, right? That's how much binding it is. And these bushings came with this camber kit. There's no, there's no reason for, there's no reason for me to bash the ball joint design because the ball joint design, I never had no problems with the ball joint design. It don't have a great, range of travel as you guys can see i know on skunk too they have a little notch right here that's cut out where you can have more travel but you can see where the car i don't know wait let's take a good look at this is that design like that mm, i don't know if this design like this or the metal because this metal right here is not that hard it's pretty soft this looked kind of like it was forced and when I went to go get my car aligned, they ran the camber all the way out and I was still having negative camber. I was all the way positive camber and I still was getting tire wear. As you guys can see right here. So this is the only range of travel that you have. Not really that good in design. The boot, I know you guys like, where the hell is the boot at? The boot design? This is the little ring that when you set the boot on, right? And then you put the ring over it and it keeps the boot. The boot design was horrible. It split on me. So I just completely took them off. It was going to go to AutoZone and get some polyurethane because these are still, you know, pretty good. I just didn't like the bushing design. Didn't like this at all. Didn't like this binding. That binding sucks. I don't know if Skunk 2 have this problem of binding but it wasn't my cup of tea. So what I went to go do is look for another company that sold camera kits. Came across Skunk 2, Skunk 2 made some really good camera kits. Mm, from what I know, I never, per I never personally ran them, but I never heard nobody have any problems running a Skunk 2 camera kit. And then there was a company 
<clears throat> excuse me, a company that was copying Skunk 2 camera kits for a minute. I don't know what company it was, but I notified Skunk 2 about it, and I guess they, you know, took action and got the shit taken down or whatever, but yeah, for a real quick, for a real quick little second, there was people that was running a straight direct copy of Skunk 2 camera kits. It was like in green, blue, orange. It was pretty dope, but I was gonna buy some, but at the time, I didn't have no money, so I couldn't get them. Ran these, didn't like them. And what I come across? Oh yeah, the hard race camber kit. Now, Skunk 2, Skunk 2 camber kits is made, their design is close to like, it's close to this like a stamp design. You know, pretty strong, but when you want just superior strip, you want a tube design. Better, I know Skunk 2 have these type of um, boots. Spherical bearings is the best you can get. These spherical bearings right here cost 300 bucks just by themselves. Now, as you guys can see, we can barely move these in a rock. You see the, the range of motion these things got? <laughs> Crazy, right? That's what you want in a camera kit setup. Let's go into the range of travel. Now you guys can see next to this, look at the range of travel. There's no comparison whatsoever. Far superior than this right here. Now, one thing I was little, a little bit concerned on the hard race camera kit was these bolts right here. These Allen head bolts. Cause on Skunk 2, they sit flush. I can cut these down, you know, they're just bolts. They're just longer bolts. It's no, you know, no biggie. I still have the plastic on these. <laughs> I never took it off. Let me see, can we get it off? Oh, what the hell. Fuck it. Leave it on there. Protection, right? Always gotta wear a condom. <laughs> but yeah. So, this is what you want in the camera kit set up. This right here. Let's install these bad boys. Now, to install these, you're gonna need a 17 and an 18. And also, don't forget your counter pan. Now, what you wanna do is take your camera kit and feed it between the strut, just like this. And then just line that up to the two holes at the top. Now, as you're feeding your camera kit through the struts, if anybody running spherical bearings like I am, it will make this installation a lot, lot easier. Because if you have those bolts, if you have those bushings too tight, you will get bonding and it'll be kind of difficult. So as you have, all right, there we go. Now, as you have those in there, let me, get my, let me put my damper back on. There we go. Take your nut. And just finger tighten them down. Tell it holds the camera kit up. There we go. Now, if you have these, now that you have these finger tight, you're good. Now, as now as you guys can see, I have maximum clearance, no binding from the bearings. I forgot the name of this piece right here, but I'm gonna just call it the steering arm. Now, move the camber kit all the way up and move the steering arm into place and drop it. And drop the camera kit right in. Oh yeah. Now, take your cutter nut and just screw it in.
Doing this shit with one hand is mad. A pain. <laughs> Over here looking like the motherfucking one hand bandit. <laughs> Alright, it don't have to be super tight. Make sure it's really, you know, a decent amount. And then take your counter pin. Am I even saying that right? Count counter pin, counter pin, counter pin, whatever. Shit. <laughs> Take this motherfucking damn, what's that dude? MacGyver. <laughs> Take your MacGyver pin and push that shit in. Okay, now once you got your MacGyver pin in, <laughs> just easily just bend them, you know, the opposite way. Should look something like that. Booyah. You know, you can bend them both ways, or you can bend one one way and the other the other way, but same thing. And your camera kit is installed. Simple as that. Now, you have the range of adjustment at the bottom of the camera kit. Come on, focus on me, baby. There we go. Have the range of adjustment at the bottom of the bolts under the camera kit. Unlike some camera kits where they're at the top, which is completely horrible who the hell's texting me right now i think it's my homie drew jeez man they be speeding like crazy down the street like it be kids it be kids in the street and people know this and they just be flying up and down the street crazy then put your wheel on and put your lug nuts on right now it doesn't matter if you're going to cross pattern because the wheel is still off the ground so once you got those hand tightened Lower the car. Just a little bit. Now put all the weight on it. Now also, I want to cover something that a lot of people do not speak about. If you have aluminum lug nuts, these need to be hand tightened. Never ever put an air gun on aluminum lug nuts. Don't do that because you will strip them. I'm gonna tell y'all a little story about what happened when that happened to me. Went to American Tires and they installed my lug nuts with an air gun. And some really bad stuff happened, but that's for another video. <laughs> now, once you have the car completely on the ground, then you can completely tighten your lug nuts in a star pattern. One, two, three, four. Never go one, two, three, four. Don't do that. The camera kit, if anybody didn't know how to install one, now you know. I know there's millions of videos on how to install a camera kit, but this your boy SI Rico version. <laughs> Hope y'all liked the video, man. Um, I'm gonna do more things, cover some more stuff that I got experience with that I've been doing on my car, you know, from the past. And rate, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell, you know, so you can get update on all the little videos I do. Take care. Have a nice day. Peace, boy. I can't stress this enough. After you're done installing your camera kit or any project that you're doing, make sure your bolts, nuts are tight because safety is a motherfucker. Yeah.